We use our mobile phones every day. Your phone is powered by a battery, and when it runs out of power, what do you do? It has to be charged with a mobile phone charger. While recharging, have you ever thought about how a mobile charger works? In this video I will show you how mobile phones charger actually work. Let's start the video. Welcome to Star Technology 5G. This is a normal mobile phone charger. Its input is 220 volts AC. The output is 5 volts DC. You would know that a charger converts AC into DC, but it is not as simple as you think. First, it converts AC into DC. Then, it converts back DC into AC. And finally, it converts AC into DC. Today we are going to see how the mobile phone charger circuit does this and why are there intermediate steps. Let's see what's inside the charger. First, remove the front cover. Move this PCB out of the charger. Inside the mobile phone charger is just a 5 volt switching power supply. Now we can see all the electronic components used in it. There are diodes, capacitors, transistors, resistors, transformers, and an optocoupler. And there are SMD resistors below on the PCB. To better understand the circuit, let's rearrange the circuit. These two wires are phase and neutral for input supply. First, we have a resistor. We can see it is a 22 ohm resistor. This is a fusible resistor that prevents damage from overloading. The next one is the S14K300 Varistor that protects against over voltage such as lightning, power contact, and power induction. This is NTC10 temperature sensor, this is used to protect the charger from high temperatures. These three components are used to protect the charger. Then there is a bridge rectifier made of 41N4007 PN junction diodes. This bridge rectifier converts the AC voltages into pulsating DC voltages. After that, there is the filter capacitor. The value of the filter capacitor is 2.2 microfarad. This circuit converts an AC supply into a DC pulsating supply. This is an oscillator circuit. This circuit converts DC back to high frequency AC of 15 to 50 kHz. These are two transistors, S8050 and 13001. After that, there is a small diode that looks like a Zener diode, but it's a fast switching diode, its number is 1N4148. This is the switching transformer, it has three windings, primary, secondary, and feedback winding wrapped around the ferric magnetic core. For better understanding, I will change this transformer into symbolic form. This is primary winding. This is secondary winding. Secondary winding is used to step down the voltage. And this is feedback winding. The purpose of the feedback winding is to run the oscillator circuit. Then we have a Shockley diode 1N5819 and a capacitor of 470 microfarad. This circuit converts AC back to DC. This is a 4.2 V Zener diode. For feedback circuit, what happen if we turn on this charger? We have the input of 220 voltages and 50 Hz AC. The red wire carry the positive voltage and the blue wire carry the negative voltage or ground. This current passing through the fusible resistor and current limiting resistor. The next is a bridge rectifier, it converts AC voltages to fluctuating DC voltages. As we can see this fluctuating DC. After passing from the filter capacitor it becomes almost pure DC. Now, this current passes from the 2 mega ohm resistor to the base of the T1 transistor to turn it on. This transistor isn't fully turned on, because of the resistance it turns on partially. Due to the partial turning on of the transistor, a low current passed from the primary winding of the transformer. This induces a low voltage in the auxiliary winding. The induced voltage now charges the capacitor and then the capacitor fully turns on the transistor. As the transistor is now fully on, it allows the current to flow through itself. Now, this turns on the transistor T2, 
This shunts the base of the T1 transistor turning it off. As the T1 turns off the flow of current to the T2 is cut off. Now the current flows to the base of the T1 and the cycle repeats. This situation happens at 15 to 50 kHz which is a thousand times faster than the rectifier circuit. At the same time, the voltage from the auxiliary also turns the diode on and charges the capacitor and flows to the optocoupler. This diode and capacitor convert the AC signal from the auxiliary coil to the DC for the optocoupler. The current is also induced in the secondary winding. This is converted to DC by a Shockley diode and a filter capacitor. And we will get 5 volts output from the USB socket. But what if the voltage is more than 5 volts? We have a feedback circuit. As we reach 4.2 volts the Zener diode turns on allowing the current to flow to the optocoupler. It also drops the voltage by 4.2 volts. The transmitter LED requires 0.8 volts to turn on. When the voltage reaches more than 5 volts, this turns on the LED of the optocoupler. The infrared light of the transmitter LED turns on the phototransistor of the optocoupler allowing the current to flow to the transistor T2. This turns on the transistor T2 shunting the first and stopping the flow of current in the primary winding. Also, the voltage in the secondary side of the transformer drops below 5 volts, turning off the Zener diode and optocoupler. Now you might think about why we should not directly convert AC to DC than this. This is because of the normal power supply which is at 50 or 60 Hz. The size of the transformer and the capacitors are large. They cannot be mounted in a small charger like this. For this reason first we need to convert the 50 or 60 Hz frequency into 50 kHz. This reduces the size of the transformer and capacitor required in the circuit. So to change the frequency of AC first we have to convert it to DC and then again back to AC. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Star Technology. Please like and share the video.